We are living through stressful and extraordinary times. And as a spiritual practitioner, you may have noticed that during this time, it is more and more difficult to keep anxiety and stress levels down. You may have noticed that some of your usual go-to practices aren't quite as effective as they normally are. In this podcast, I'll talk about why that is and give you some of my top tools in order to shake up your practice a bit and make sure that you're keeping stress levels at a minimum in order to keep your resilience high. Welcome to the Modern Mystics Podcast. I'm your host, Alana Kaivalya, the yoga doctor. I'm here to help you realize your potential as a spiritual leader and elevate your work in the realm of yoga, mysticism, and spirituality. This podcast covers all of our favorite topics, yoga, alchemy, astrology, divination, spirituality, psychology, ritual, and mystical practices, both ancient and modern. Get ready to up-level your status as a modern mystic. I've noticed over the last few weeks that my normal go-to practices just aren't having the same effect. I'm guessing that the the same may be true for you or for your students. So I wanted to pop into this podcast and just explain what's really happening here. Why isn't the yoga that we normally employ having its incredible effects and giving us that yoga buzz? What is the deal, especially when we need those effects from yoga so badly right now? This current situation, this current crisis, which seems like it will be our new normal for a decent amount of time, is a highly stressful event. We've been asked to shift into this new normal very quickly with no time to adjust or grieve our past normal. This is a pretty big deal for us psychologically. Normally, we have a little bit of an adjustment period, but we also have other ways to cope. When things shift or transition, when life suddenly changes, we can usually depend on friends and family to help us through it. But times right now are quite different. And we don't have what we don't have that luxury. It's funny that it's a luxury now, but it is. And it's not necessarily available to us, at least not in the ways that it once was. So this constantly applied high level of stress is very unusual for the human body, the human mind, and the human emotions to deal with. Evolutionarily speaking, our physical body is designed to deal with high levels of stress under a short duration of time. Think of being chased by a bear or a mountain lion. Yeah, it's a seriously stressful situation, but it doesn't last forever. It's over very quickly, and then we are allowed to shift back into a more relaxed rest and digest mode, shifting out of that fight or flight response. What we experience now is very unusual, and our bodies just aren't adjusted to it. Constantly applied, high levels of stress is not something the human body is designed to cope with. Constantly applied, high levels of stress have incredibly detrimental effects. It raises our cortisol levels. It increases our anxiety. It uh, affects our immune system. There are very real effects from constantly applied high levels of stress, which means that us, especially as spiritual practitioners and leaders, we've got to help ourselves and our community reduce stress. Now, of course, many of the tools of yoga help to do that, and they've been proven to help do that. We've seen lots of studies about how yoga reduces stress, and boy, oh boy, is that important right now, but we may have to do it in a different way. You see, what's occurring right now is a high level of trauma, and a traumatized body reverts to old triggers or old habits and patterns. This can often actually create or re-stimulate PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So we're not just experiencing stress, we're experiencing trauma. 
And that can move us into more of a PTSD, a heightened awareness response. You'll notice if this is happening to you, if little things startle you. Somebody shutting the cabinet, for example, sets you on edge. Or the TV being too loud just seems to drive you nuts. Or seeing a commercial sends you into tears. If small things seem to be triggering high emotional responses, it's likely that you've moved into this trauma response phase or PTSD effect. Now, Without having that properly diagnosed by a mental health professional, I don't want any of you freaking out, making big assumptions, or this adding to your stress. I simply want to present the reasons why some of the things that normally work don't work for you. This is a different experience. In the past, it's likely that you've had more mild stressful events that didn't feel like a major trauma, in which case your normal yoga practices had their desired effect. But because we are in a different kind of response, because we are in a heightened awareness response, we're going to need different tools and probably going to need to pull out the big guns, (laughs) or at least think outside the box of what works. Now, if you haven't yet, I highly encourage you to listen to last week's podcast, Podcast 21. I go through the psychological model of yoga, the yoga psychology model of the koshas or the layers of the body. This is going to give you an even better understanding of what we're going through at this time and how to address it. So make sure you've listened to the last podcast. Now, If you've noticed that some of these things that you normally do don't work, like I have, you know, normally I'm a big fan of alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shodhana. It's one of my favorites. Do it for a short time in the morning and boy, I just feel enlivened and awakened. But right now it makes me feel anxious and frankly, bored. (laughs) So I noticed that and realized that I needed to do something different. One of the things that I'll encourage you to do if you're employing pranayama as a practice, which I highly recommend because it does help to regulate your mind as well as your emotions, is actually to take it back, kick it old school with some very simple breathing that you may have learned when you first started yoga practice, the three-part breath. Oh my goodness, boring, you might say. I know, I know, it's basic. But what our body needs right now might be some very basic support. Nothing high level, nothing that could send us into a more emotional or anxious response. So here's what I recommend for you, or at least to give a try. And I recommend that you share this with your students and clients as well. Go ahead and come into Shavasana. Why not? Don't we all need a Shavasana right now? (laughs) And whether it be at the end of a formal practice or literally in the middle of your workday, give Shavasana a try. But rather than just lying there still trying to shut off your brain, which good luck with that right now, lie there and place one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly and employ your old school three-part yogic breath. Take a deep breath in and notice how the breath lifts the chest, expands the rib cage, and raises the belly. And as you exhale, you'll feel the belly descend, the rib cage get smaller, and the chest lower. And again, inhale, feel the chest raise, the rib cage expand, and the belly rise. Exhale, the belly descends, the rib cage starts to get smaller, and the chest goes down. I'm not kidding. Repeat this over and over as slowly and as fully as you can. One of the things that occurs when we are in a panic response, and again, this is an elevated, this is not just a stress response, this is a trauma response. And we are in a high level of stress, which might be very well perceived by the body as trauma. Our diaphragm seizes up. It goes on lockdown. Now, I don't know essentially why this is. It feels ridiculous because, gosh, don't we need to breathe all the time? But the diaphragm can hold a lot of stress and tension. And when it isn't working properly, it continues to perpetuate that fight or flight response of the body. 
in order to relax the diaphragm, the three-part breath is very, very effective. So to use this three-part breath, we relax the diaphragm, which helps to cue the body out of this fight-or-flight response. So that's my first hot tip for you and your students and clients right now in shaking up your practice to make it more effective during this time of heightened trauma and stress, potentially kicking us into more of a PTSD response. The next thing I want to bring up is meditation. Meditation for us as yogis often feels like a panacea, a silver bullet, the thing that will help everything. It's not. Meditation can actually be very counterproductive for people who have difficulty with anxious thoughts, anxiety, depression, negative thought patterns. Meditation essentially asks us to just be alone with our thoughts. And frankly, if our thoughts aren't that great or our mind is racing, it can actually hurt us rather than help us. So rather than a classical meditation practice, I want to encourage you to branch out to find some visualization practices that help to move you out of your mind and thoughts. I've noticed that having someone else guide me through a visualization practice or even potentially better, a hypnosis practice, it releases me from my own thoughts, right? Our own thoughts at this time might not be that great. They might not be that helpful. So when someone gets in there with their uplifting words, we can release our own thoughts and be guided through a more relaxed and gentle practice of visualization or hypnosis. Really what we want out of a meditation practice is stress reduction. Now in the best of times, that can be the case. Meditation can certainly help to alleviate stress. But in times like these, that may not be the case. And what's causing racing thoughts, anxiety, these uh, negative thought patterns are the triggers that arise from our unconscious mind. Our unconscious is essentially our inner child. And children in times of high stress need soothing and nurturing. This is the same for you. In times of high stress, you This unconscious part of you, this inner child, needs to be soothed and nurtured on its own level, on the unconscious level. We need to do practices that help us to get in and address our inner child, which is screaming for help and support right now, particularly if you are feeling this heightened stress response. I know this might sound cliche. I know that this feels like a bad episode of some you know, crime drama on TV, but it's true. This is psychologically accurate that there's an an inner child, a part of you that is younger, uh, deeper, and in pain. And we have to tend to it. We have to tend to ourselves as if we were a responsible parent or a loving guardian. So to do that, we speak to it on its own language, with its own language. And hypnosis is great for that. Now, many of us are using streaming services at this time, Amazon Music or Pandora or Spotify, even YouTube. And on many of these streaming services, you can find hypnosis practices, hypnosis for deep sleep, hypnosis for stress relief, hypnosis for... um, joy, hypnosis for attracting abundance. There's all sorts of things out there. If you are not yourself qualified as a hypnotherapist or hypnosis practitioner, utilizing these guided hypnosis uh, tapes will be very helpful for you. Give them a try. Sample them. See which ones produce a positive effect. You might have to try several different ones. And this is going to talk directly to your unconscious. That is how hypnosis works. It talks directly to your unconscious. It talks to this inner child that needs soothing. The other things I would suggest are things that you feel or experience to be soothing and nurturing practices. And literally, I know that this sounds cheesy. Trust me, I do. But actually dialogue with that inner child. You can say, hey, kid, I'm here for you. What we're going to do now is, let's say, take a bath or draw or try a puzzle or relax in Shavasana. 
Imagine holding your own hand, your own three-year-old hand or your own five-year-old hand as you do these practices. Really make it a communication with your inner child. That is the part of you that is in shock at this time. So to reduce shock and trauma, we employ methods that speak with the unconscious. Another one of my favorite tools that you may or may not be able to get a hold of are the Bach Flower Essences Rescue Remedy. So if you've ever heard of Rescue Remedy, it's something that I've found very, very helpful at different traumatic points in my life. Um, it is a product. I don't, it's not endorsed. I don't have any kind of, you know, I don't have any kind of uh, investment in it at all. It's just something that I've found helpful. You may or may not be able to get it. So there are some other things, of course, that I've talked about in this podcast, which you have access to right now. Uh, the other thing, if you can get it, is the Bach Flower Essences Rescue Remedy. Rescue Remedy, you can search it um, on any online retailer, I'm sure, to find it. And that may also be additionally helpful for you. It does, again, work on that level of shock and trauma with the deep unconscious. Um, I don't believe it's been scientifically backed, so I can't say anything about it on that level. But from my own personal experience and personal use, I've found it very helpful in the past. So my friends, here are three things to consider and try. Basic three-part breath in a Shavasana. You can even, during that three-part breath Shavasana, do some hypnosis work through guided hypnosis. And if you have access to it, try Rescue Remedy. These are just just things that I've felt that have been helpful for me over the last few weeks as I've noticed my own trauma response increasing, as I've noticed my own practice uh, not being as effective as it once was, and as I've shaken it up and stirred things up a bit to try and find practices that are more deeply therapeutic for me at this time. So I wanted to share those tips and tricks with you. I would love to hear what other things you are using at this time that seem to be more helpful during this crazy period that we're going through right now. If you'd like to, please come and share it with us in my membership community, highereducation.yoga. To join us, it's only a dollar. Come check us out at highereducation.yoga slash trial and let us know what tips, tricks you are using. We are talking about this inside the group at this time. We are all there as a community, as a satsang, supporting each other. We're talking about what parts of our practice don't work, how our bodies are responding, how we're helping others. Um, I would love for you to be a part of that community. So come share that with us. Let me know how you're doing. I am deeply interested in how you are. I have always been here for you. I am here for you. And I will continue to be here for you throughout this uh, incredible time that we are living in. Please take care of yourself. And until the next podcast, namaste.